Path 331. This is Lecture 6, Inequalities, Part 2. We've got a few people who are going to be participating by Zoom today. And so what I want to do is I want to continue with the arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality we looked at. This is one of the most important inequalities in mathematics. I care about it, but I care more about how to attack and how to prove it. Again, if any of you are looking to try your hand at mathematical writing at your mathematical outreach, there's a lot of great stuff related to what we're doing that would be wonderful articles. And you know, it's a great chance for you to practice writing. It's also a great chance for you to have you know, some service to talk about. So I will just redisplay the links from last time. If you want to read more about inequalities, you know, here are some good places to go, uh, some other videos you can watch. I want to talk a little bit about different ways to prove the AMGM. And I debated cheating because I can easily cheat and you guys won't know where I could have thought about this lecture on the way home because I got a lot of walking that I do. Or I could have looked at my videos from the previous years. Or I could have looked at the handout that I wrote and I decided that would be wrong. Now, of course, I could be doing it at a higher level and saying that that was wrong and actually done that and trying to just pretend. But no, I am being honest. I have not looked at the stuff, so I am not sure how to prove the results today using some of the methods. So it is quite possible we could get stuck today in trying to see, can we prove this using the following approach? If so, that's actually good. That's my justification that you know, I want you to see me stuck. And just how would we try to prove something? You know, too often, Serge Lane remarked, it's a shame that a math textbook is, is totally ordered along the page axis, where it's just this logical progression and you never see anyone stumbling or going down wrong avenues and everything is just beautifully presented and you get to the result of how could you have gotten anywhere else? You know, today, let's take some details. Okay, so I want to go back to geometric proofs. Maybe it's a little bit wrong to say geometric proof of the arithmetic mean geometric mean because that seems to be implying that, but it's a different type of geometric proof. So geometric proof of the AMGM. And so again, the result is the arithmetic, oops, didn't change this, the font size. The arithmetic mean of x and y is x plus y over two. The geometric mean of x, y is the square root of x, y. And we talked a little bit about why these are natural. We talked a little bit about how you could possibly extend them. We talked a little bit about how we're assuming zero less than x less than equal to y. We talked a little bit about without loss of generality, x equals one, and you can let y equal, I'm sorry, t equal y over x. And this is because the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean both have a wonderful property. The arithmetic mean of rx ry equals r times the arithmetic mean of xy. And the geometric mean of rx ry equals r times the geometric mean of xy. So this gives us the ability to talk about normalization is we can reduce the difficulty of the problem from a two-dimensional problem involving X and Y to a one-dimensional problem involving T. That is tremendous progress. It means we can somehow maybe reduce this to a Calc 1 problem rather than a Calc 2 problem. And one of the things you might have learned if you did multivariable calculus is that if you are really lucky, you can convert a multi-dimensional integral to just a sequence of one-dimensional integrals. It's not quite always true because you sometimes have more complicated regions, but in spherical coordinates, what does the sphere look like in spherical coordinates? A cube, not quite a cube. Sorry, it's very cool. Not a square. You were close with the cube. Your cube has everything equal. It's a box. Right. I think when you say when you say cube, does everything have to be the same, or is a cube not necessarily all the same? Oh yeah, because yeah, when you when you say cube, are all is the length, width, height all the same? When you say box, what do you mean? Uh, they, they don't all have to be the same. So so d does a cube mean everything has to be the same? I didn't know it around like a cube and the same box. But it's all right. Well, I will use the fact that you are from the other hemisphere <laughs> and things are backwards for you. So. Okay, so cube has to be all the same? 
Okay, so at least in this part of the world, when we say cube, we mean length, width, height, and other same. I um, mean, generally, we talk about a box. Um, they're not necessarily the same. In spherical coordinates, a sphere becomes a box. In cylindrical coordinates, a cylinder becomes a box. In polar coordinates, a circle becomes a rectangle. So we're reducing things to much nicer regions where the hope is you can then just apply calc one a sequence of times. And so this idea of lather, rinse, repeat, we can maybe sometimes reduce by one dimension and then play along. If we wanted to, we could actually do the problem in just one variable. You know, by doing this change of variable, by renormalizing, this is an absolutely essential idea to remember when you're attacking problems like this. Can I see how things scale without loss of generality? And sometimes there's more than one way you can normalize. So I can think of at least three normalizations. One of them, that's a terrible one, is I could take x equals one. I could take the arithmetic mean equals one, or I could take the geometric mean equals one. I can always normalize so that any of those three could happen. Okay. If you're not sure which normalization you should do, what should you do? Yeah, try one, see how it goes. And if it doesn't go well, try the next. Try the next. This is the baby is crying. You know, when you're a new parent and the baby is crying, you don't necessarily know immediately which cry it is. Does the baby want to be held? Does the baby need a bottle? Does the baby want to stop seeing the bed sucks that's on TV? You, know, you keep trying all the different things. Eventually, after a while, you realize, ah, that's the cry that the baby wants to be held. That's the cry that the baby needs a new diaper. It took me a while to realize that one. Yeah. And eventually, you can just jump to the right thing. But if there's only finitely many things to try, that's not so bad. And this is where AI is going to kick ass, in that AI will just try all of these things very, very quickly. All right. So these are three things to consider. All right, so let's go back to the geometric proof. So we have, I'm gonna do a circle of radius r equals x plus y over two. I could have done one plus t over two. I'll do x plus y over two. Do we agree that either one of these is the same? All right, so again, I'm going to use horrible, horrible. I think an architect is somebody who can just quickly draw a reasonable circle. All right, so here is my circle. Oops. And here's my radius. And now I'm going to use a nice result from geometry. And I'll put in some letters again, A, B, C, D, E, F. We talked about these a little bit before. I don't really care what order we're doing things. Okay. And the result from geometry is that um, I'll call this maybe H for the height h times h equals a c times c d. And hopefully I've got things right. All right, how would we prove this? Well, we have right triangles galore. I can even add a few more right triangles by drawing like this. And so we can start to give things names. Um, where you can call maybe BC, any preference for what we call BC, maybe call that alpha, um, call ED, beta, call this gamma. All right, so the first triangle we have is we can relate H to alpha, and this is going to be R because it's the radius, right? So we get h squared is r squared minus alpha squared. Yes, everybody comfortable with that? What's another relation we have involving h?
Yes. You 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 could, but I I'm just trying to use Pythagoras. So what's another relationship I can use involving H? So I could do that. So I could do H squared is gamma squared plus R plus alpha squared. Does it? Oh, sorry. Um, minus. Sorry. There is another relationship I could have with H. There's another right triangle. So we did B, C, E, we did A, C, E. What's another right triangle involving H? Sorry, just clarify. Which one? E, C, D. Did I do something wrong? H is the vertical. H is the vertical. Like it's from C to E, C to E is H, right? C, C to, so H, H equals C, E. Uh -uh. We, 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 we wrote, I wrote beta there. Oh, okay. So like H squared plus alpha squared. So H squared. So, so what would CD be? So H would be, um, say that again, 2R minus alpha. So CD would be 2 minus alpha. No, no, not 2R, 2R minus alpha. And so that means H squared would be beta squared minus 2R minus alpha squared. And then what other relations do we have? Say it again. H times 2R equals to gamma times beta. It's A D is the right angle. So so say that again, because you're saying with the multiplication? It's gamma times beta. Uh, the, like, oh, the, the area of the triangle? Yeah, the triangle AED. And if we like, try to flash out that, it will have like, some cost curve, but I think like, that substitution might come like, useful later. Right, right but, but, you, but we can keep doing just using Pythagoras. We don't have to use areas. Yes. Um, for 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 the for the last one, um, well, so CD the the whole diameter is two R, right? Alpha is the distance from beta to C, from B to C. Oh, it's just R minus alpha. Oh, okay, sorry. Yes, R minus alpha. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. I think I heard somebody say two R, and I just wrote that down. Yes, you're right. You're right. It is R minus alpha. So beta is E D. We can say like beta squared plus gamma squared equals to four R. Good. So we would also have um, beta squared plus gamma squared is four R squared. So now we're starting to have lots of different relations. And so if you combine these, you should end up getting um, this should yield R plus alpha times R minus alpha equals H squared. I think you should get that at the end of the day. That that's the geometry that if you have you know, a diameter of a circle and you have a chord that's perpendicular to it, then the product of the two parts is equal to. So I will let you do the algebra to prove that, okay? I believe we now have more than enough there. What's nice is you can see the beta squared plus gamma squared would just give us a four R squared. So if we start adding some things, we'll get like a two H squared is a four R squared, then an R plus alpha squared and R minus alpha squared. 
So I, I think everything is going to work out very nicely. So I'll let you do the rest of the algebra and finish it from this point. So let's assume we now know this. So assume we now know that R plus alpha times R minus alpha is H squared. How does that prove the arithmetic mean geometric mean? Say like a equals alpha. Like you, 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 so you get like a square root of a equals h. Guarantee that h is equal to. Okay. So 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 what do you think h equals? What does r equal? We've defined R to be X plus Y over two. What is X plus Y over two? The arithmetic mean. So note, R is the arithmetic mean. If we can show H is the geometric mean, are we done? Yeah, R minus L. Okay. Right. The other thing is, you know, looking at our picture, R is the hypotenuse, H is the height. We know geometrically that if I give you a right triangle, the hypotenuse can't be smaller than the height. So all we have to do is show that H is the geometric mean. So if H is the geometric mean then done as R is going to be greater than or equal to H. The only time R would be H is if you take the limit as you go straight vertical and then you would have equality. So in the limit as alpha goes to zero. So here are the ingredients, and you know, as an exercise, see if you can complete this and make this a proof. You know, see if you can reprove that result from geometry, that essentially the product of the two chords is equal to the product of the other two. And then once we have that, if we can interpret H as the geometric mean, then we're done. If we can't interpret H as the geometric mean, then this is completely useless. And it won't help with the problem. But this is a geometric way to try to see why the arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality might be true, is at the end of the day, what am I pointing to? I'm pointing to the fact that of a right triangle, the hypotenuse can't be smaller than the side. And that's the basis for the geometric proof of the arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality. Okay. We've also seen other proofs by just doing it directly and squaring it. So let's go back to now we know um, x1 plus x2 over 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of x1, x2. And of course, I'll do it as, you know, 0 less than x1, x2. I can even write like this. I don't necessarily have to have x2 greater than or equal to x1. It's often not a bad idea to just normalize like this. Building on the success for the arithmetic mean geometric mean, what do you think we should try to do next? I've taken the average of two numbers two different ways, and I have a relationship. How would you try to generalize the arithmetic mean of two numbers? What might come next? Okay, good. Which do you want to do next? Three numbers or four numbers? Good. Why is four easier than three? Interesting. If you x1, x2, x3, x4, you just say x1 is x1 plus x2, or x. Okay, so we're going to count one, two, four. And what do you think we'll count after four? Six. 
six, eight. Well, which is it? Yeah. Six or eight? Eight. eight. And after eight? 16. So this is an idea that it might actually be easier because we know how to deal with two items. So if I give you four items, you know, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 over four, do we agree that that should be the arithmetic mean of four items? How could I write that as the arithmetic mean of two items? Let T1 equal X1 plus X2, and let T2 equal X3 plus X4. Almost. You are really close. Okay. Divide both by two. You divide both by two. Right? So I'm going to let the first one be X1 plus X2 over two plus X3 plus X4 over two. And now I divide each of those by two. So that's just algebra at this point. Now, what do I know about the arithmetic mean of these two numbers? I have my two numbers. If you want, think of this as u1, think of this as u2. What do we know about the arithmetic mean of u1 plus u2? Than the geometric nope, other, other way. Sorry, it's greater than the geometric So this is going to be greater than or equal to the geometric mean of u1, u2, which is the square root of u1, u2. So that's going to be the square root of x1 plus x2 over 2 times x3 plus x4 over 2. All right, now what can we do? So one possibility is to pull out a one half. And then we would be left with x1 plus x2 times x3 plus x4. That's a perfectly fine thing to do, but we want to, what's the goal? What, what are we searching for? Right, so we want to compare with the geometric mean of x1, x2, x3, x4, which is x1, x2, x3, x4 to the one fourth. Yes. Ah, so we can use the geometric mean here. So this is going to be the same as the square root Yes, of the square root of x1, x2, and then times the square root of x3, x4 by the arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality. Does everyone see that we're now using the arithmetic mean, geometric mean for x1 plus x2 over 2 and for x3 plus x4 over 2? Oh, sorry, greater than or equal to, thank you. Yes, greater than or equal to. Well, what's the square root of the square root? It's the fourth root. So this is just going to be x1, x2, x3, x4 to the one fourth. And we've now proven a generalization of the arithmetic mean geometric mean for four. So notice that we used the arithmetic mean geometric mean twice. We first used it with you know, grouping x1, x2, x3, x4, and then we applied it once, and then we used it again. So now 
We do not know the arithmetic mean geometric mean for three items, but we know it for one, for two, and for four. So do we want to do six next or eight next? What do you think is going to work better, six or eight? Looking at this, do you think we want to have things grouped? Well, what, how did we succeed? When we had four items, we were able to reduce to two items where we already know. So if we have six, we have to somehow take the six and reduce to either two or four items. So do you want to go from six to downs to twos and fours, or do you want to go from eights down to fours? I think eights is probably easier. I think eights is probably easier. I can also make a stronger statement as somebody who's taught this before. I know eights is easier, right? It's easier to go one, two, four, eight, right? And so what we would have is x1 plus dot, 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 plus x4 plus x5 plus dot, 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 plus x8 over eight. You have two options of how to go. How do you want to go next? You can break it up into two things of four, or how else could you do it? Four things of two, right? So you have a little bit of freedom here, right? Um, given that I've written like this, let's do it as x1 plus dot 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 plus x4 over two, I'm sorry, over four, plus x5 plus dot 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 plus x8 over four over two. And so now I can use the arithmetic geometric mean with just two items. So this is going to be greater than or equal to um, the square root of x1 plus dot, 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 plus x4 over 4 times x5 plus dot, 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 plus x8 over 4 by am gm with n equals 2. Now what do I do? So what should I do now? OK, there's two ways I can do the same thing. Right. So do I want to break this up into each one of them is now going to be a sum of two things? Or do I want to just use the fact that I now know the AMGM for four things? Yeah, I'd much rather use the AMGM for four things, right? That's a, that, So this is now going to be greater than or equal to the square root of the geometric mean of this is just going to be um, x1 dot 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 x4 to the 1 fourth, and then x5 dot 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 x8 to the 1 fourth by am gm with n equals 4. And now we've got the square root of two fourth roots, which last time I checked. Oh, no, I didn't check because I wasn't um, thinking about this problem at all. I'll check now. Okay, good. The square root of a fourth root is an eighth root. And so this will just be x1 dot 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 x8 to the one eighth. And so we've now proven the geometric, the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality with eight items. Does anybody have any concerns about trying to do this for 16? So how should we go from here? What should we do? Okay, but what method of proof? Induction, right? So now proof by induction. So we get it's true for n equals 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, dot, dot, dot. So we have it's true now for powers of 2. There are numbers that are not powers of 2. Right? Not every number is a power of two. Right? So what do we do for numbers that are not powers of two? We know the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality whenever we have a power of two. So now, 
So imagine you have x1, x2, dot, 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 xn, and I'll say two to the k is less than n is less than two to the k. Now, clearly that's wrong. Right? I either have to have it's less than two to the k plus one, or it's greater than two to the k minus one. One of those numbers can be k. Do you want k to be the lower bound? I'm gonna choose the first thing greater than that. Doesn't really matter too much. But you know, we, we, have, we have our freedom. Do we want two to the k to be the highest power of two, or we, which is smaller, or do we want two to the k to be above it? The lower? So if it's the lower, then you're going to be having numbers. The number of numbers you have is going to be greater than maybe where you've proven things. Now again, we've already done it by induction, so to some extent we have it everywhere. It does not really matter. Well, the arithmetic mean geometric mean is true when k equal, when you have just one item because it's just an equality. So it really doesn't matter if we're marching down by induction. I might have a slight preference to having two to the k being larger than my number so that I know that it's true there. And I'm looking at fewer numbers than where I know it's true rather than maybe having more numbers than where I know it's true. In some sense, it doesn't really matter because I'm assuming we've already done the induction and we've shown it's true for all n. If I do it the other way, maybe I now know it's true up to two to the k and I'm gonna fill in all the ones I've missed from two to the k minus one to two to the k. So I know it's true at 16, I know it's true at eight, and now I'm gonna fill in nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'll do it this way. It really doesn't matter because by induction I can show it holds for all powers of two and then just fall downward, okay? So let's think about what's going on. So we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus dot, 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 plus xn. And now we have xn plus one plus xn plus two plus dot, 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 plus x2 to the k. We can add whatever we want. What do we divide by? Two to the K. And this is gonna be greater than or equal to X1, X2, dot, 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 Xn, right? Times Xn plus one, or I'll keep them in red. xn plus one, xn plus two, dot, 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 x two to the k. And we'll take this to the one over two to the k. Okay. So we have a couple of ways to proceed. I get to choose what I put in for all the x's. I don't want to be dividing by two to the k. What do I want to divide by? I want to divide by n, and I don't want the x and plus one to x to the two k to be there at all. So I really wish I didn't have those x's there, but I need to put something in. So the question is, what should I put in? The simplest is have all the x's being the same thing. Any thoughts as to what might be a good thing to put in for them? You can do whatever you want. You can put anything you want. It just isn't useful. So the question is, can we? Yes, we can. I mean, just put a one or a zero. Okay, good. So, so good things to try. 
and again, I don't care if it's wrong. Um, Xn plus one equals dot 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 equals x two to the k, and all uh, one possibility is zero or one. I claim one of them is going to be really bad to try, but it's it's worth considering. What else could we try? Because if you take them all to be zero, then the geometric mean just becomes zero. You can then rescale, but you, you're, you're going to lose. You're not going to be able to get anything. If you take them all to be one, you've changed what the sum is. And it's not going to be rescaled in a nice way from the original sum. So zero is bad because it just gives you some positive number, some non-negative number is greater than or equal to zero. We already knew that. If you take one, we've increased the sum of x1 through xn by some amount that we don't know. Now, we do have the ability to renormalize the sum. We could set the sum equal to one, or we could set the product equal to one. Those are options. Any other thoughts about what we might want to take the sum to be? Or maybe not the sum, maybe the product. Can anybody think of a good value for the sum of the new red x's or the product of the red x's? Yes. So whatever you say, can we? The answer is always yes. When you say dot, 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 are you adding? Are you multiplying? What are you doing? Good. That's a possibility. So do you want each one of them to be the product of everything? Well, you're allowed to do anything you want. This is one of the few classes you can do anything you want. It just isn't useful. So we could say all are equal to x1 dot 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 xn. And instead of having them being the product, what else could we have done instead? The sum. Right. You are never going to have, I think, another math class where you will spend this much time on a proof this simple, right? You will get the Moses comes down from Mount Sinai with you know the commandments and the very fast argument, if you're lucky, of how we get there. I like to give myself some freedom and flexibility. So instead of just saying that it equals the product, I could give myself a little bit of freedom. I could raise it to a power. What power shall I raise it to? So you know you know exactly what power to raise it to. Well, I'm just trying stuff. We're trying stuff. But then that, that forces you to a specific choice that gives you no freedom as the argument goes to change the power. You could use the power of Z. <laughs> Did you say Z or? So we could do Z, we could do R, we could just do some power. Right? And so we could raise this to some free parameter, say delta. And now delta is free. For the sum, would we want to raise the sum to a power or would we want to multiply it by something to give us a, some freedom to rescale? Multiply, what should we multiply by? I'll do beta just to be different. Beta is free. So I love having free parameters that I can play with. So I can start doing an argument and I can ask, is there a choice of delta that will make the argument work? Is there a choice of beta that will make the argument work? When I think about what's going on, you know, do I think, okay, I, I think we agree that one was a bad idea. Yes. It was worth trying. It was absolutely worth putting on the list. It's the simplest thing to do. Always do the simplest thing first. You know, if you don't do that, then you are making your life needlessly complicated. Let's see if we're lucky and if taking zero or one works. It doesn't. So now we have to do either two or three. You know, one possibility is I could, you know, continuing the biblical metaphors, I could do like a Red Sea, split the class in two, and say, go. 
and give you know, one of you the multiplicative, one of you the additive, and see who can get success first. Any intuition as to which do you think is going to be better? We're trying to get at the end of the day, a certain arithmetic sum is greater than a product. Any intuition? So if you look at what we have, we have the blue X's plus the red X's. Do we want the each red X? Do we want it to be a product or do we want it to be a sum of the blues? I think the sum, I think it's going to fit together better like that because then everything is going to then just be a sum and it's just going to be a rescaled sum. Oh, and maybe if I choose beta appropriately, this will become what I want. So let's see if this works. So we have x1 plus dot, dot, dot. Does anybody remember the old pens when they were younger that had like four colors and you could easily click? I wish I had that. X. They still have them. Um, I, I need something like that for the iPad so I can switch colors faster. So we have something like this. And now we're going to set xn plus one equals dot, dot, dot equals x2 to the k is going to be x1 plus dot, dot, dot plus xn to the beta. Oh, sorry. Uh, that is, you're right. That's not n. That is two to the k. Thank you. And maybe just for simplicity, I'll define s to be x1 plus xn, just to be the sum. So now what I get is I get s plus how many terms do I have? How many red x's do we have? We have 2k minus n. Each one of them is beta times s. And we divide this by 2 to the k. So this is going to be 2 to the k minus n times beta over 2 to the k times s. Is there a choice of beta that will make this what we want? If we're trying to get the arithmetic mean of x1 through xn, is there a choice of beta that will give us the arithmetic mean? So is there a choice of beta that will give me x1 plus dot 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 plus xn over n? So, yeah, so, so we want this equal s divided by n, and we have 2k minus n times beta over 2 to the k. So that expression Yes, we just take beta to be 2 to the k over 2 to the k minus n times 1 over n. And if we take that to be beta, then the 2 to the k over 2 to the k minus n is going to cancel the 2 to the k minus n over 2 to the k, and that'll leave us with a 1 over n. Does, does this make sense? OK, do you see how the sum we have now is some multiple of s? OK, we, we have the blue x's and the red x's, and we're dividing by 2 to the k. The blue x's sum to s. Yes? yes. The red x's, each one of them is beta times s. And you said correctly, there's 2k minus n of them. Uh, so, the, so this is the arithmetic mean of x1 through x2k. Yeah. We don't want the arithmetic mean of x1 through x2k. We want just the arithmetic mean of x1 through xn. We want just the blues divided by n, not everything divided by 2k to the k. We're trying to get the arithmetic mean. Oh, yes, yeah. And so if we do it like this, we want to get S over N. So we want S over N, which is X1 plus XN over N, 
And we start with x1 plus xn, and then we have all the reds, xn plus 1 plus x to the 2 to the k over 2 to the k. So we don't have exactly what we want. But the nice thing is because the reds, each one of them is just beta times the sum, our expression is just 2k minus n times beta over 2k times s. But we don't want that. We just want s over n. So if we choose beta to be 2k over 2k minus n times 1 over n, we now get exactly what we want. So if beta equals 2 to the k over 2 to the k minus n times 1 over n, then the arithmetic mean of x1 dot 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 xn xn plus 1 dot 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 x2 to the k is just equal to the arithmetic mean of x1 through xn. So the arithmetic mean of x1 through xn is the same as this larger arithmetic mean with more terms. So we have you know, the extra xns, xn plus 1, xn plus 2, all the way up to x to the 2k. But by choosing beta appropriately, these two different sets of x's have the same arithmetic mean. Do we know anything about the arithmetic mean of x1 through x2k? What do we know about the arithmetic mean of x1 through x2 to the 2k? What do we know about that? We have two to the k items. What do we know? Well, do we know the ge arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality when we have two to the k items? That's the whole reason why we added these. This is going to be greater than or equal to the geometric mean of x1 dot 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 xn xn plus 1 dot 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 x2 to the k. As we know for powers of 2. Right? So because this is just the arithmetic mean of x1 through xn, we know that that's greater than or equal to the geometric mean, which is x1 times x2 dot 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 times xn times xn plus 1 dot 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 x2 to the k to the 1 over 2 to the k. Right? But each of the xn plus 1, xn plus 2, is everybody comfortable with this? That's just the geometric mean. Uh, I was just thinking the side. We, 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 we showed a moment ago by choosing beta like this. Oh, so just, the I'm, slide is still staying the right, right. But because we've chosen beta this way, the arithmetic mean of everything up to 2 to the k is just the arithmetic mean of everything up to n. We're scaling. We're, we're, we're scaling. We're choosing beta to be this way. This is true for our beta. And so here we have x n plus 1 equals dot 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 equals x 2 to the k equals this beta times, I think we've made all of them equal to beta times the sum, times x1 plus xn, which you can view as uh, beta times the arithmetic mean of x1 
through Xn times n. Because the sum is just going to be n times the arithmetic mean. Are you comfortable with this? We, we, we've defined xn plus 1, xn plus 2, xn plus 3 to just be beta times the sum. The sum is just the arithmetic mean times n. Right? The arithmetic mean is the sum divided by n. So the sum of the items is just n times the arithmetic mean. Yeah. So when we plug that in for the special value of beta, what do we get? We get the arithmetic mean of x1 through xn is greater than or equal to x1, x2, x3, xn. And now xn plus 1 to x2k, each one of those is going to be the arithmetic mean times n. So it's going to be beta times n times the arithmetic mean of x1 through xn. How many times do we have all of those? So it's two to the k minus n times. Right? And then I'm going to just raise this side to two to the k just to make the exponents a little bit nicer. So if the arithmetic mean is greater than equal to that to the one over two to the k, I can raise both sides by two to the k. So notice, this is the arithmetic mean over here. This is looking a lot like the geometric mean. And we have the arithmetic mean occurring again on both sides. So we'll finish the proof in the next class. See if you can finish proving it over here. We've got the arithmetic mean on both sides, different powers. See if you can combine everything and isolate and get a relationship between the geometric mean. But the key idea was we were trying to get a relationship between the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean. We didn't have exactly what we wanted. We had to add additional things because we only knew it was true if we had a full power of two. We have complete freedom in what we add. This was a really good choice because it makes the left-hand side look like the arithmetic mean of what we care about. And now can we manipulate this to get a geometric mean that we want? And so you, we've got a bunch of uh, things to think about. Try to do the algebra. So you know, that's part of your assignment for the next class. See if you can finish, go through the algebra. Uh, you need time to just play with these things. All right, this is a good place to stop.